he has then, he goes right into this theory of the origin of language, right? Um, and, and he relies then on the Bible to tell him where language comes from, right? And he says, um, uh, the first offer of speech was God himself um, that instructed Adam how to name such creatures as he presented to his sight, right? So that's, that's Hobbes interpreting the Bible. Um, but I put, you know, above there, that's the Bible passage where he's getting this from. And the Bible passage, you know, it's actually not so clear, right? Because what, 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 do we, what it says, the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make an help meet for him, uh, like a helper that's suitable for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. That's the key sentence, right? And so what's, what's kind of curious about the sentence is that it doesn't really say um, that God instructed Adam, right? That's, what, that's how Hobbes is interpreting it. He says, well, God instructed Adam. But it's, it's, it just says God would see what Adam would call them, right? And so is God teaching him language there? Or is he just sort of like giving him all of these creatures and then allowing Adam to then uh, to, to name them? But it could be that Adam already knew how to speak before that. So it's, 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 it's not very clear in the Bible. And so Hobbes is kind of like pushing the Bible in a certain direction. So, so that, that's one thing we want to kind of note that that kind of a, oh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not, he's not um, misinterpreting the Bible. I don't think you could say that. Um, but he's certainly pushing in a certain direction. All right. So let's, let's continue for a moment um, <coughs> and see... Um, what he does, he, he continues, right? Because he says, on the one hand, he's saying that speech was, uh, was granted from God. But then he continues, he says, for I do not find anything in the scripture out of which directly or by consequence can be gathered. Adam was taught the names of all figures, numbers, measures, colors, sounds, fancies, relations. So um, he's, uh, he's, he's focusing on this issue of uh, how God created all these beasts and Adam was to name the beasts, and that was sort of where the names of beasts came from. But then he's saying, but hold on, there's all these other things in the world besides animals, and Adam must have had to name all those too, because we've got names for all these different things. And God probably it didn't say anything that God taught him that, so, you know, he must have invented all of these things on his own, right? And so he says, well, in addition to God granting language, you know, Adam or humans must have invented language as well, right? And so he doesn't really, you know, he's not, <coughs> again, he's not saying thing, anything that really contradicts the Bible, but he's kind of, you know, he's, he's extrapolating from what he sees, and he's kind of drawing some conclusions that are really not in the text itself, right? So that's, you know, the, the first um, indication of how, you know, we're getting an indication of how Hobbes reads, right? And, and, and how he interprets things, right? Uh, and so we were saying that, you know, he's using the Bible, and that's his, his evidence, but he's got a particular way of using that evidence, okay? Now let's look at the next example. Um, he goes on and talks about the Tower of Babel, right? And he says, okay, well, um, the first thing uh, <coughs> that I'll note that he doesn't really focus on, but I, mean, he, he, I think he's, it's something that he, he points out, in a sense, that a single language, so, you know, so the story goes that bef in the beginning, all humans had one single language, right? And, um, and so in that, in that first part in red, they have all one language, and this we begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So that they start building this tower, and God is worried, right? You know, they, they've got all this one language, they can do anything if they have all one language, um, and you know, just nothing can stop them. And so, you know, now I've got to go down and somehow, you know, break all this up. So, so that, you know, so that humans won't be as, as, as powerful as they could be, right? And so, um, you know, so, so Hobbes points out, okay, once God scatters the different languages, scatters people uh, uh, and, and sort of what prohibits them from having a single language, um, then humans have to go ahead and invent language again on their own, right? And this is the other kind of, um, you know, I guess, for, for Hobbes, proof that, that, that language was invented. So he, you know, he says he, they, they had to invent language in such manner as need. The mother of all inventions taught them. Right? So again, he's, you know, he's basing his ideas on this Bible passage, right? on, on how you know, humans initially had the single language, they were dispersed, and they had to develop all these different languages on their own. As a kind of as his evidence for saying that humans invented language, and again, it's a, 
it's extrapolating. He's kind of like taking something that's there, but um, it's not really, it's not, you know, it doesn't clearly state in the Bible humans invented language, right? But he's sort of um, inferring that from other um, aspects of what he's seeing, right? Um, so that's essentially the way he's, you know, he's interpreting. He's using the Bible, but he's then, you know, he has this particular way of reading the Bible that, that really wants to kind of fill in lots of blanks, okay?